here, now that they're showing all bottom, this is where I don't like the jungler. Yeah. Because they're not going to show up here, and you have a brief window where the enemy team is busy. They're hitting a tower, and they're trying to catch clinks right here. So this, this is not like... I'm really close to an item, and they definitely could be sitting right here on the wave. This is like... This is just like playing scared, basically. So like, I want this next wave to die. And then, if you think they're about to show up, then you fall back and get these camps. All right, guys, welcome back. This is week of coaching number 25. Uh, last week, the homework was to work on gathering info constantly. And the objective of doing that is to understand who's doing well, who isn't doing well, and what you might need to prepare for. Maybe an item coming up or an important like power spike on the enemy team. And so, uh, Dookie, what was the MMR again? 2397. 2397. Okay, cool. All right. Still in roughly the same area. Um, and then the questions you had were basically, when can you start transitioning to jungling? And then, like, when is that efficient? And then the second question was, uh, how do we figure out if we should rotate to a fight or if we should just keep farming or pushing a lane? Um, like, basically, like, are we rotating too much or not rotating enough? And then question number three was, were there any like general farm acceleration tips, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look here. So this was a Sand King game. I'm just going to look at the graph real quick. You guys were roughly even for a lot of it. So we're also going to have a look at that at the 20 minute mark. Let's see what happened there. Um, and then were there particular parts of the game that you wanted to look at? Like timestamps that you can remember? Um, not necessarily timestamps, but um, in there's just one some point at the lane where um, I think uh, it's a, one of those situations again where more people show up to the lane, and it becomes kind of like unsafe for me to be there, and I think I kind of realized that, but it took me a minute to kind of like think about like what okay like what do i do if i can't just walk up to the lane okay so that would be related to the jungling question then right the first yeah. question okay all right so the the general um takeaway from last time of like needing to gather more info and stuff like that that's going to be a common thing i'm not going to just restate it uh, yeah. from last week but I'll point it out if I like notice you doing it a lot more. Yeah, I know in the beginning here I forget, and then I realize I forgot, and then I'll <laughs> yeah. have to start doing it. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right. That's the hard part about some of this stuff is it's like Dota, like it's such a game with like a large kind of mental stack mm -hmm. of things to think about. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I think that's fine, not walking up there to try and help him, because you don't even have stun yet. Alright, we have the south. So you don't need it yet. How do you feel about this lane, by the way? So, Saint King Gyro versus Zeus Abaddon. Um... I think they have a lot better, like, of a lane than us. The Gyro can kind of harass us easily, and the Abaddon can protect him. And I just don't think, like, Zeus is going to have enough mana to, like, uh, react to that harass and harass back. Yeah. So it just did not feel, like, really great. Yeah, I think I think they're a little bit more efficient than yeah. you guys, uh, and just in how their kits work and all that stuff. So I think I'd agree with that. And so that basically tells you like this this lane already is like we're not really looking to get a lot of kills here. We're just looking to like farm as much as we can. So as long as like yeah. that's not being impeded, then we're good. Basically, we can be happy with it.
by the way, it's like, you kind of didn't really have an opportunity to do it in time there, but that would be like an instance like with farm acceleration, if you like were able to run over to the um, ancients and stack them. Yeah. Kind of like whenever you're forced out of lane like that, like if it's a good opportunity to stack, like try and work that in. Yeah. It is more your Zeus's job than yours, but yeah. sometimes you can but do it for no, yourself. I definitely like, that's something I'm trying to like keep in mind too, is like, if you're in a moment where like you don't know what to do, just check time and see if you can stack. Yeah, which is good. Okay. So what what period were you talking about where everybody shows up in your lane? Because Spirit Breaker's kind of been here for a while now. Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of this point where I'm starting to get hit and hit over again, and I'm like, there's nothing I can really do. Um, like at this point, like if I just walk up, they just hit me. I'm trying, like, my best to get, like, um, whatever shows up here. Yeah, which I think you're doing okay. I mean, yeah. you're keeping up in last hits, 31 to 8, 33 to 7, so I think it's okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you're low health, that, that actually doesn't mean anything except for, like, what could happen, right? So, like, right, right. If, like it, all it really means is, like, well, I can't commit to a fight. But if you weren't really yeah. looking to commit to a fight anyway, then it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. So I think yeah, you I, should be okay with this. I think it's, like, around, like, the Vanguard time, I was like, okay, well, I, well, I, I definitely need to stay in lane until I get that. After that, I can kind of... This is, like, a big thing that I've been trying to do a lot more of. I think I was better in the past. Yeah. Um, PSJ said a really good thing about this sort of concept in general that like um he notices like some people will like um probably when they were first learning to like push out lanes mm. uh they're like okay that's a good thing i'm gonna i'm gonna do a lot of it yeah. and then eventually like they get punished hard for it by people showing up and then it's like okay well i'm just not gonna do that then because I died. <laughs> but yeah. the, the, the real answer is to just do it better yeah yeah that's, so I've, yeah. I've been trying to kind of uh, apply that with like um, also just like going behind creep waves and like mm -hmm. trying to analyze okay when does this make sense for me to do this versus like when it's going to get me killed yeah well I think in that instance there like you started to cut the lane and then you've missed half the wave so yeah. then you didn't like force it like you just dragged it back to your creeps since that's good yeah. and I think this is fine like gives you just a little bit of solo XP kind of I don't know. It's it seems okay. Like that's an okay time to do that. Not didn't really even miss that much in the process. The only thing I would be concerned about is that you did that on a catapult wave. Yeah. Um. So it worked out here, but it, like in some instances, like if you go to jungle, like right on like the five, ten, fifteen minute mark, like that can mean like catapults that, are yeah. getting pushed up too much, and yeah. I like this too. Yeah, this seems fine. And um, so the first question, right? So let's, first question is when can we start jungling and what makes it efficient? So that is obviously, uh, it's kind of like you were saying, it's like, well, when you can, like when you have the regen and the tankiness and the wave clear to like do it, right? That was a nice stun there, I like that. This was unfortunate. This is very oh, unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, that was unfortunate for sure. Um, but that's gonna happen, right? So, kind of part of it. Yeah. Um, so it's not just when can you jungle, but it's also like, like, you have to ask yourself the question, like, if I go to jungle right now, it, is this taking me, like, out of play for a long time? Like, because I, I have to commit spells to jungle, or my regen isn't quite good enough to be 100% health while I'm jungling? So it's not just like, I can now clear jungle camps, it's like, can I clear jungle camps without sacrificing really anything? And yeah. the other part of that is, like, is there anything else I could be doing? Yeah. And I think that's kind of, if you just ask yourself that question first, like, is there anything else I could be doing right now? Then that's that kind of gives you your answer. Like, if there's someone that's low that you maybe could have killed, or if there was like a big wave that needed to be farmed, or whatever you know whatever it is it's just asking yourself like what else could i be doing instead of just sitting here jungling and that's really it yeah 
Um, and so far, I haven't seen, like, the, the only, like, semi-relevant objective was just going to the triangle when the catapults were up. But that's really it. Yeah. Oof. That pure damage, yeah. though. That's what I'm saying. Why the fuck did they make this motherfucker's <laughs> ultimate pure damage? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's so painful. It already solo killed you before, even with armor. That was another thing that was really tough about this game. I'm like, what are, like... Uh, in theory, like, something like, um... Uh, Lotus Orb mm -hmm. seems pretty good here. But then, like, he just ults me and I died to pure damage. So, like, what, what, like, do I rush heart? I think it's just a matter of, like... Well, I mean, his spell is a channel, right? I mean, it's still Witch Doctor. You stun him and the ult stops. Yeah. So that's part of it. It means you might need to stay the sun for him. And then other than that, yeah, then you'd want to be, like, buying health to counter it. Um, I think... Okay, the Juggernaut's a bit weird. I think, you, like, you came to this lane, then the Juggernaut... Because I was about to say, like, oh, I don't want you farming in front of a Juggernaut. But then it's like, well, you were here first, and then he walked up. So, like, go I somewhere also, else, yeah, Juggernaut. I, I... I told him, since we took tower bottom, go bottom. Yeah, like, for me, sure. Let me take the risk with this dude in lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I dig it. But then, see, shit like this happens. And it, I guess it's like, you know, sometimes it's just like, your team's gonna do what they're gonna do, you know? Well, I don't know if it's really, like, your team doing anything there. Like, so that fight in particular is in your triangle. Yeah. So, really... Really, all that is, is just you need to have TP ready. Yeah. And, like, if they're fighting, like, if they're going on your core while, like, he's farming, like, that's what you show up to that fight. Because it's yeah. not like it's Juggernaut being a dummy. Like, he's he's yeah. in his triangle surrounded by four towers and an no, outburst, right, and he's right. dying in his triangle, right? Like, that's, yeah. we need to rotate on that for sure. So that one really, just the screw up there, is just not having the TP scroll ready. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to see when you last had one. And then we'll go from there. Let's see. Well, I think it's like I, I TP up there. Yeah, yeah, you TP top. So you just need to have another one because you would have... I think if you just had a second TP scroll, you would have had it in time for the triangle fight. Um, so just make sure you always have one, basically. Is, is the lesson there. Um... But I do think, I, I mean, if you did have the TP scroll, like, I would have said, like, yeah, you need to rotate to that fight. Because they shouldn't be able to do that. Like, the enemy team should not be able to walk into your triangle and, like, kill Juggernaut when the map looks like this, right? That's not, that's not cool. They should die for that. Yeah. And I, I remember checking this guy's inventory mm -hmm. and him not having dust. Oh. And then he bought dust. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I did check that. I probably would not have stuck around had I checked and saw him obviously have dust. Right. Oof. Hey, you guys getting run over. And you just got like the four men ult and everything. So it's it's kind of lame because I can't see when you're clicking on someone. Yeah. Um. Well, I see. Yeah. I. It's just like this is always on you. So yeah. I have to like watch your cursor and see where your screen is going to see if you actually are clicking on someone. Um, yeah. So it's really hard to notice it. But I will say in general, I think I've seen you look at I've, I think I've seen you look at an area you were not in maybe three times so far. Yeah. Um, and I would like it to be at least 21 times because that's how many minutes are in the game. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. it, like if we could just set ourselves a goal like every minute i'm gonna look at something else right i think that's fair that could be fine mm. that kit that death also you got to be careful about that one because basically like you do have to kind of defend this and everything but you just have yeah. to you have to defend it like this the yeah, way you're doing well, and now. you'll see, you'll see my reaction to that death. Is I realize, like, 
I can. Ba I basically cannot show on the creep wave. I I have to push the waves, which is hard with Sand King. But I have to push in the in a way that I don't really show myself. Yeah. So I have to like blink Sandstorm instantly. Yeah, like yeah, that. but even if they're on top of it and they have the dust, then you have no answer to it. Right. So what I would well, say... Well, on top of, like, looking where they're at. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? So, like, if we just watch the area that they came from, we'll go back, uh, we'll go back a few minutes watch it. So this is the tier one. We just had this big fight in the area. Okay, you TP back up. Okay. Or, no, you died, then you TP back up, back up to this fight. That's unfortunate. Yeah, they have too much defense with Abaddon and Witch Doctor. It's too hard to, like, go in there. Because that was, like, a perfect goal that didn't result in anything. All right. So, now now we're in the... Okay, we lost the fight. So, where do these guys go? That's what I want to know. Right. Well, I'm watching the mini-map here. Okay, they go into our jungle. They go on Zeus. And I'm, I'm just looking to see, like, do they show anywhere else? Night Stalker's still top. I see Gyro bottom. So, right now... Remember, we were talking about that area control thing a long time ago, right? Coloring the map in. Right now, this is dangerous because yeah. you know there's at least there's four heroes here. The only hero who, who it is physically impossible cannot be here is Gyrocopter because there's nothing to TP to, right? He could, The Gyrocopter could get here within about 30 seconds. So if you don't, if you see him here and then 30 seconds pass, then Gyro may as well be up here too. But for now, it's just like four heroes could be here. And so you guys can't come back here unless you have all of your ults and your smoked and you have wards and like everything is ready. Because yeah. you like you just had a four man ult on them and like one of one person died. Like it's you had like almost the ideal like kind of team fight setup, at least for yourself. Your whole team wasn't there. And it didn't work. So like at this point. We need to be really, like, stacking the deck. Because otherwise this happens. Two yeah. of you die, and now uh, you just... Okay, now we can't go there anymore. And so then this is... This is effectively just kind of doing the same thing. Like, going on that Witch Doctor, this is pretty much the same area. You're still, like, dipping your toes in. Like, maybe the shark won't get me this time. And, <laughs> right? It's like, no, they have Catch, they have a Night Stalker, they have a Spirit Breaker. Like, these guys can go on you almost anywhere you are, so if you're not in a defensible area... It's basically what's going on here is, like, your team is not playing around Night Stalker and um, Spirit Breaker. Yeah. And this, this happens a lot, especially in lower brackets. Like, people are just not ready to deal with Invis heroes or Global heroes, and they're like, oh, it looks clear. No, it's not clear, because... Fucking yeah. Spirit Breaker is charging you as of 30 seconds ago, right? So things like this, yeah. So I think here, now that they're showing all bottom, this is where I don't like the jungler. Yeah. Because they're not going to show up here. And you have a brief window where the enemy team is busy. They're hitting a tower and they're trying to catch Clinks right here. So this, this is not like, I'm really close to an item, and they definitely could be sitting right here on the wave. This is like, this is just like playing scared, basically. So like, I want this next wave to die. And then, if you think they're about to show up, then you fall back and get these camps. Like, it's good that you're still constantly farming, but um, yeah. this would be like, I want the wave, not the camps. And, you, you know, like, it's perfectly possible that you go ahead and do that. Like, you push every goddamn wave and they just don't react to it. And then you lose barracks or something like that. Like, that happens too. But, like, you want to be trying to, like, force them to make mistakes, right? Right. Like, they don't want to come back up here. They want to be doing what they're doing, which is, like, taking your tier 2 and then taking a, your Tormentor and taking your Ancients and then warding up your Triangle and then getting Roche control and then winning the game. Like, that's... Yeah. That it's all that's the whole game plan here. I mean, really they're just death balling, but that's what would they would want to happen. And so if you yeah. can get anybody to split off, like that's always the goal, like when you're behind, like split them up. Do some Viet Cong shit, right? Yeah. See this is and then there's a risk of waiting this long to do it. And this is something I've I've kind of learned recently as well. 
there's a risk of waiting this long to do it because they're already done with their objectives. Yeah. So like, if you do this when they're hitting the tier two and you can see them TPing, like, or they don't want to leave their tier two push, then it's good, right? But they're done now. They have nothing else to do unless they're going here. So it, their only options once they clear this are like, what can we farm or are we going high ground? Otherwise they're just literally sitting there, right? So now they have time to react to it. And so it's it's like super likely that you you actually die during this. Yeah. I definitely felt that whenever I did it. I was like, I cannot stick around here. <laughs> yeah, right. I just, yeah. Like, I would say, actually, like, if they were more on top of it, you should have died there. Yeah. But that's okay. I mean, you know. You see, yeah, and even... it's like, it's a difference of, like, 5, 10, 15 seconds of these these decisions being, like, really good or really bad. Yeah. That was good, though. Kind of. Witch Rocker triple kill. You're in a tough spot here. Because you have a Klink's Warlock Zeus lineup. And yeah. so you're, once again, the only initiation. But you also have a channel that needs to be cancelled. Yeah. And it's very, very hard to, like, initiate properly and cancel his ult that you need to. Because you're, yeah. you're relying on, like, Warlock counter ulting or Zeus lightning bolting or whatever, like, to yeah. counter this. And you can't rely on them to do that perfectly. And so really what needs to be happening here, and it's not going to happen, but what should be happening is the way these fights go is Jug walks in first and baits them, and then you get to go. Yeah. But, See, this yeah. this is kind of like, um, it's almost like a, it's related to, like, a fighting game concept. And okay. I noticed this in the BSJ um stuff too is it uh i need to like figure out like what is my purpose in a fight past like the obvious like jump in and do a bunch of damage like that's kind of like one purpose but mm -hmm. um like in fighting games it's like you link a move with another move to like give both moves more purpose sure so like yeah so something like this i need to save that stun for when this happens he, this happens yeah right. so jump in with um my ult and sandstorm and then hold the stun so i think uh i think we're are we going too off the rails on these questions here because i think it's kind of like we're not really talking about these questions but yeah. um i'm gonna sum this up um and basically like what you need to do is you need to look at your cop and be like okay how much extra stun in initiation or whatever maybe it's a damage spell maybe it's an aoe spell maybe it's a stun maybe it's a silence it doesn't matter what it is right how much of that do we have and that basically dictates like what you're allowed to use it on yeah so right now you guys have three stuns one of them's an ultimate one of them is a single target zeus lightning bolt with only 850 range and the other one is your blink burrow strike so you have the like pretty much the best stun, I would say, because it's repeatable. You don't just cast it once every 160 seconds. Like, like, well, it's, he has to be thinking more about it than you do, but, but yours is going to be like the primary stun happening. And so yeah. normally what we would be wanting is we'd be wanting your AOE stun to be applied to as many heroes as possible. And we want it to be applied to the threatening heroes so that they can get locked in place and they're not a threat anymore. So we want to be stunning like Night Stalker and Gyro, right? But because we don't have an excess of stuns that can really be used, you now also have to be thinking about this stupid support and his stupid pure damage ult. And so basically what it means is like, you just don't get to pick as many fights because if you pick them and you don't save the spell for the right time, you lose the fight. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I know, I know, Cybrek. I know, there's Zeus as well, and I'm talking about that. But also, like, I'm not relying on this Zeus to do that, even though, like, yes, you're right, like, Lightning Bolt absolutely 100% should be our, the only answer we need to a Death Ward. It really just, that should be it. That's all we need. But yeah, in this case where it's like, honest. yeah, like, he, he's kind of given up. He's not really playing. He doesn't have an Aether Lens yet, even though he could buy one right now. So, like, Zeus isn't a factor. Um, so we're going to talk about this in terms of not having the Zeus at all. And basically that means like, well, now it's your job because the death ward is the thing killing you. So now you have to be thinking about that 
whenever you go. It's a little bit like, let's say you were against an enemy Enigma and you were the only stun, right? Yeah, you want to be stunning the whole team to set up for a good team fight. But like, if you blow your only stun and then he black holes, you guys loot that fight anyway. So it just means that you have to like, you have to counter initiate instead. And that also affects your itemization as well. So when you're in this mode of like, my spells are more important than my hero, right? That's where you start itemizing for more um, utility. So that's where like Shadow Blade becomes an option. Um, you know, like the Yules and the, obviously your Blink, because you're not really, you're not just like generic stun man that has to walk in and stun everybody and then survive. You're like guy that has to stun very particular person at very particular time and then get the fuck out. And that's all your job is, right? Is that making sense? Yeah. Okay. And it sucks, right? It sucks to be in this position where you're the only whatever in the team. Yeah, but, but it, sometimes yeah. that just is what it is. You know? That's how it's going to be, I, right? Yeah. I think thinking in those terms also helps like other questions be answered kind of like intuitively. Like, how should I position? Yeah. And, it, it, like, and actually, so to answer that one, like the way you position in this type of a lineup where like you do have to be stunning this backliner, and that's really important is you start positioning more to the sides you start yeah. like you go sneaky like you're not the frontline tank anymore you're the like the blue card you know you're the counter spell card and so you have to stay out until you see that spell stay out of vision you know maybe even fucking smoke yourself so that you're really hard to spot and then do it right yeah um anyway so let's go over uh we're just gonna let this run in the background while we go over these questions um, so when can we start jungling and what makes it efficient? So the answer to this one would be obviously like when you're not spending too much resources or time clearing camps, but you have, you have to consider like if there's anything else you could be doing and that's both a decision during the jungling and like before you start jungling right? yeah so it's like ideally what you'd be doing is you'd be thinking about it ahead of time like am i gonna go jungle now and then it's like well no maybe they might go on my mid laner and i want to be ready for that or whatever the hell right so then yeah. you just don't do it or it's like while you're jungling you're looking around and making sure you're like saving enough mana and saving your important spells so you can like tp to a fight or walk out or do something right yeah. um uh another quick question related to that is when when does farming camps become more efficient than lane creeps i don't have an answer to that one because yeah. i haven't looked at the gold scaling yeah um so i think that's mostly going to be a feel thing but yeah. I, I don't have an actual like numbers answer for that yeah um so i was since... guessing it's it's when you can clear like a good multiple camps before another creep wave spawns That was like what was like intuitive to me, but obviously I don't. Yeah, I don't know the exact numbers either. But I thought I heard something about like lane creeps don't scale. Yeah, with gold anymore. So yeah, that's that's what we were talking about before. Yeah. So let me let me bring that up real quick. So you, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Ah, yeah, it was seven point three three. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Uh, I don't remember. Was that last week I was talking about that? Yes. Okay. So, change gold bounty for lane creeps. So that's melee creeps, range creeps, siege creeps, whatever. Flag bearers. Melee creep gold bounty increase per upgrade decreased from 1 to 0. So, lane creeps normally, at, like at certain intervals, I can't remember what the minutes are, but they get... The bounty for them goes up at certain points in the game, right? And so it's 1 scaling, and now it's 0 scaling. So melee creeps and super melee creeps don't scale at all now. Yeah. Range creeps used to go up by six and now they only go up by three. So there's just way less scaling going on here. Um, and that's why there, there is gonna be a certain point in the game where a jungle camp nets you more gold than a, a, a creep wave does. Except yeah. for the fact that creep waves also get larger and have more creeps in them over time. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a carry player, so I, I can't, like, 
yeah, like I yeah. completely answer exactly when that is, but but basically like yeah, it, it goes down to the timing thing. Like if you can kill the wave and in the next 30 seconds go kill a camp, great, then go do it, right? And then if in the next 30 seconds you can kill two camps, like even better, right? And then that's right. just going up and up and up. Like if you're like an actual like carry hero, that's kind of how they gauge how efficient it is to go start jungling. It's like, can I nail like three camps in one, in 30 seconds or four camps in 30 seconds? And that whole farming rotation is kind of based around like how much you can kill in that period where you're not missing yeah. the lane creeps. Unless you don't really care about the lane creeps anymore because you don't, that lane sucks for you or you can actually just kill so many lane creeps or there's so much to farm, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Um, okay. And how do we figure out if we should farm or rotate? It's basically like if your presence is needed so like that fight here this exact fight we were talking about like your presence was needed in this fight right um and so that's that would be an instance if you're not needed there like they're gonna get the kill on their own or maybe it's just your position five dying on his own or it's just a kill and if you rotated too early like nobody rotates at level one even though kills happen at level one right and why is that? It's because then you'd be stuck in that area of the map for 60 seconds. And so it's it's not worth the trade-off, right? Yeah. So it's basically like, am I actually needed there? You know? Right. So just ask yourself that question. Am I needed? Like, is it going to be a disaster if I'm not there? And sometimes it isn't. Sometimes your team's going to lose the fight, but it isn't a disaster. You know, they're going to get like three deaths to two deaths, and it's not like that bad, and maybe it's just an efficiency thing of whether you want to go or not. But like otherwise, sometimes it's just a disaster if you don't show up, right? And then general farm acceleration tips, um, stack camps whenever um, you get the chance. And this would be camps that you actually intend on farming later. Um, And then it's really just like things you're already kind of doing, like dragging waves into jungle camps to farm them with sandstorms, yeah. stuff like that, right? So this is like on a per hero basis type of thing. But I'd say yeah. like the the main thing that you could start implementing that I don't see at all is camp stacking. Yeah. Um, and I think we're gonna keep we're gonna keep the homework from last week because I saw a yeah. little bit of looking around, but there needs to be like a lot more looking around. Yeah. We'll um, we'll try and keep it to the uh since since I've started taking the baby steps. Yeah. We'll we'll do it um on the minute now. Aim for at least one check per minute. And that would yeah. be something like I want you to be Outside looking of... at pe obviously people you're yeah. laying against, I want you to be keeping tabs on them constantly, like clicking their items, clicking their items, blah 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 right checking their stats and all that stuff but like maybe like at least once a minute go look at mid lane or yeah. go look at your safe lane whatever right yeah and i think those are like part of the reason why I sometimes like i'm like oh well when should i be showing up to like help in the other lanes well i'd know if i was checking more. exactly exactly right yeah and actually so the same thing happened um with one of my bsj coaching sessions because this was his like Day one, this was his coaching for me, was I need you to be looking around more, right? Yeah. And then I think it was like fucking like three or four weeks later where I was like, oh, should I have rotated this and should I have rotated that? And was that bad? And he's like, yeah, it's not surprising that now, like, because you're in the habit of checking everything, you're in like panic mode and you're watching all the bad stuff happen everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And so now you have to like, okay, we, we're gathering the information, but now we need to actually process it and like, stay right, calm right, right? Yeah, i thought it was funny anyway yeah. okay are there any other questions for this one or do you think we pretty much hit it all no i think that was pretty good okay for sure dude thanks for watching guys i hope that was helpful don't forget to check out the playlist at the end of the video and check me out on twitch i stream every weekday and i hope to see you in the next video bye